Hi, so Phil Bedford here again, the Rebel Networker, and today I'm, I'm privileged to be here with uh, Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. Another fantastic day organised by the Right Selection team. Thank you. So, um, thank you for spending a few minutes with me, and I thought it would be a great opportunity just to share some of those pearls of wisdom uh, with the people watching this video. Thank you. Uh, and at the Referred Institute, we, we help people uh, improve the quality of their life through referrals, through networking, ultimately through relationships. Right. And uh, I just thought it would be a great idea to ask you, what would your advice be for leaders in business to help them increase the quality of life for their own selves mm. and for their employees, both in business and at home? Well, the first thing I think what you're doing is very, very important, and it's going to become only more important in the future. I did a big study that was published in a book called Global Leadership, The Next Generation. And we talked about how the leader of the future is going to be different than the leader of the past. And one of the key variables is building networks, relationships, partnerships, and alliances. So I think what you're doing is critically important for the future and will only become increasingly important in the future. But what I would suggest is get people in the habit of doing something we don't do enough. Asking people, how can I be better? How can I be a better partner, a better friend, a better family member? Teach people to learn to ask for input, to listen, to think about people's ideas, to really follow up and do what they can, and then really focus on what can I do to be a better partner. I think in networking, we spend a little too much time focusing on what can you do to help me, and not enough on what can I do to help you. And I think if people really start focusing on service and giving, they will get a return. Not so much so going into it with the idea of what can I get, going to the idea of what can I give. That's incredible. You, you actually said something that was really powerful for me in, the, uh, in the, um, the seminar, and you were mentioning how imagining you were taking your last breath at yes, yes. 95 yes. year old individual. Would you mind just sharing that with the people? Because I found that really powerful. Sure. Well, it's a, kind of the best coaching advice you're ever going to get. The advice is quite simple. Uh, imagine that you're 95 years old and you're on your deathbed. Here comes your last breath. But right before you take that breath, you're given a wonderful gift. The ability to go back in time. The ability to go back in time and talk to the person who's listening to me right now. What advice would the wise 95-year-old you, who knows what was really important in life and what was not important? and what matters and what does not matter. What advice would that wise old person have for the you that's listening to me right now? Well, I challenge people to answer just two questions in their mind. One is professional advice. That other person wants you to build great relationships, be a great professional. What professional advice would that person have? And then two, personal advice. Well, think about that and come up with whatever strategy you come up with and do that. Some friends of mine interviewed old people who were dying and got to ask this question, what advice would you have? Three themes came up in the answer from old people facing death on the personal side. Theme number one, three words, be happy now. Not next week, not next month, not next year. Great Western disease, I'll be happy when. When I get the money, the status, the BMW, the condominium, I'll be happy when. The 95 year old person facing death, that is what. A learning point from old people, I got so wrapped up looking when I did not have it. I could not see what I did have. I've asked thousands of parents around the world this question. When my child grows up, I want my child to be, and they'll say, give me one word. One word comes up from parents, more than every other word combined, no matter what country I'm in. What's that word? Happy. So I say, you want your kids to be happy, you want your parents to be happy, you want people to love you to be happy, you want the people around you to be happy, you go first. You be happy. Number two, from all people facing death, friends and family. Very important to realize that although the coworkers are important, don't ignore your friends and family. When you're 95, they're the only ones that care. And learning point three, if you have a dream, go for it. Because if you don't when you're 35, you may not when you're 95. Business advice said much different. Number one, half my life is short. Number two, which relates to your job as people, do whatever you can to help people, build relationships with people. The main reason to do that has nothing to do with money or status or getting ahead. It's 95-year-old, you will be proud of you because you did and this morning if you don't. And the other advice is also saying, go for it. The world's changing, your industry's changing, do what you think is right. You may not win, at least you can look in the mirror and say, I tried. 
old people almost never regret the risk they took for that. That was the risk they didn't take. Wow. Well, I just think I'd better stop there. But uh, thank you so much. It's been a privilege, and I look forward to meeting you again. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much. Take care.